The Two April Mornings, W. Wordsworth. There are two days remembered in this present day telling, the one of walking with a friend and the friend's remembrance of the pain evoked when seeing a child of the same age as his daughter when she was buried. We feel both the empathy of the speaker and the pain of the friend. The Two April Mornings we walked along while bright and red uprose the morning sun, and Matthew stopped, he looked and said, The will of God be done. A village schoolmaster was he, with hair of glittering grey, as bright a man as you could see on a spring holiday. And on that morning, through the grass and by the steaming rills, he travelled merrily to pass a day among the hills. Our work, said I, was well begun, then from thy breast what thought, beneath so beautiful a sun, so sad a sigh has brought. A second time did Matthew stop, and fixing still his eye upon the eastern mountain top, to me he made reply. Yon cloud with that long purple cleft brings fresh into my mind, a day like this which I have left full thirty years behind. And just above yon slope of corn, such colours and no other, were in the sky that April morn of this the very brother. With rod and line I sued the sport which that sweet season gave, and to the churchyard come, stopped short beside my daughter's grave. Nine summers had she scarcely seen the pride of all the vale, and then she sang she would have been a very nightingale. Six feet in earth my Emma lay, and yet I loved her more, for so it seemed than till that day I e'er had loved before. And turning from her grave I met beside the church sharp yard you, a blooming girl whose hair was wet with points of morning dew. A basket on her head she bare, her brow was smooth and white. To see a child so very fair, it was a pure delight. No fountain from its rocky cave e'er tripped with foot so free. She seemed as happy as a wave that dances on the sea. There came from me a sigh of pain, which I could ill confine. I looked at her, and looked again, and did not wish her mine. Matthew is in his grave, yet now methinks I see him stand, as at that moment, with a bow of wilding in his hand. 